Good morning. It is a tremendous honor for me to join at this inaugural conference with so many of both new and old friends from here in Israel and from the United States and throughout the world. And this honor to join with you as we launch what is the most important effort in science to ever be engaged in by humankind. So first I want to uh, I thank the Bird Foundation, Eitan is here, and others who are responsible for my invitation and for the Israeli Brain Technology for Rafik and his, his wife and his team who put this together. And especially for the invitation from President Shimon Perez for my visit. Now, it is true that I have flown a long way. Uh, and, but it was made much more pleasurable by the fact that I was accompanied by my wife, who's with me, uh, Renee Chanel Fatah, who's here. Please give her a welcome. <clears throat> Now, the Potomac Institute, which is one of our important think tanks uh, back home in the States, did a study on neural technology. And I'm going to talk a little bit about their central finding in a second. But I was reflecting, as I sat here on uh, a day not so long ago, that I was at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. I was there on the uh, control room floor as the Mars rover uh, landed after an eight and a half month trip uh, on its way to Mars, landed safely on the planet's surface. And the applause went up and it was such an exciting moment because it marked a continued commitment and extraordinary investment of resources and know-how and this effort in terms of space exploration. And I was reminded of that as we contemplated the import of this meeting here this morning. Some of you may know that there's some other business taking place back home in my nation's capital. But I decided that it was so much more important that it be clear that the government of the United States and the government of the State of Israel represented in this effort that there be no doubt about our commitment. The President of my country and I communicated with the White House as we uh, walked through the last 72 hours of activity in my capital uh, and the White House made it abundantly clear that this conference was a priority. So I'm happy to be here and more importantly I am pleased that the leadership shown not just here in Israel by your president, but in the world, to say that it is time now for us to focus on the mystery of the human brain. And let me try to put this into some perspective. There are over a billion people worldwide suffering from some of the more than 500 diseases and disorders of the brain. In my own country, the United States of America, it is true, and you heard it mentioned by our host that we spent, he said, 203 billion. We won't quarrel about a billion here or, do, here or there, but since I'm an appropriator, it was 205 billion last year on Alzheimer's care alone. This is just care, not prevention, but just care. Half the patients in our nation's nursing homes have Alzheimer's, but there are so many other uh, challenges. We've spent $500 billion based on the National Institute of Health uh, study on uh, dealing with mobility challenged Americans, many of whom are in that circumstances because of neurological disorders. We have some 3.6 million Americans who are blind or have sufficient uh, challenges with their vision. Uh, based on neurological uh, challenges. 
And I could go through the laundry list all time. I mean, uh, uh, autism, bipolar disease, and so on. But you get the gist of this. There are, among our families, among our communities in the United States and in Israel and all across the globe, people who are challenged by these issues. But there's also on the question of what else we can learn about the way the brain functions. And it was mentioned about brain-inspired uh, information processing. And this is something our friends in Japan have spent a great deal of interest in work in because there's a lot as we think about big data and um, your high-powered computing uh, that we could learn about the way the human brain functions. So, you know, with hundreds of billions of neurons and trillions of connections, both electrical and chemical interactions in this neuronal network, the brain is a, a, a mystery in which we know so little of. In fact, as I've traveled and interacted with Nobel Prize winners like uh, Stanley Prusner, who's a friend of mine, uh, back home in the States and with others all across the globe, it's fascinating that the most knowledgeable will tell you how little it is that we know about the actual functioning of the human brain. And so in my country, where we're investing $8 billion in the James Webb Telescope, which is a big science initiative, and I'm a big supporter of it. When you walk into an operating room in my home city of Philadelphia, and you hear a doctor say that we need better imaging tools as they go about operating on the human brain, you wonder that why can't we make this a priority? And so that's why I'm happy that we are joined together in this enterprise. And that's why I made it such a commitment to be here because there's work to be done. And in this area of neuroscience, there are, there are superior among equals. That is to say that uh, on my last trip, I was in Ireland at the EU conference on the healthy brain, healthy Europe, and now I'm here. Well, there's a method to this madness. That is to say that among the nations that have, are at the leading edge of this research, the United States, the EU, in its 27, 28 countries now. I was going to say 27, but they just added uh, Croatia, so it's 28 now. Uh, and Israel. And Israel, interestingly, has doubled its neuroscience uh, research, uh, both the volume and the citing with great universities like the University of, of uh, Hebrew and, uh, and Haifa, uh, who are doing remarkable work. And this field, this neurotechnology uh, neuro area, I was going to tell you about the Potomac Institute study. It said that it was, the study was entitled, entitled Neurotechnology's Futures. And it said that put aside the information revolution, the technology revolution, even the nanotech uh, potential, that neurotechnology has the real potential to have a greater impact in all of them combined. And you think about this, you think about what this uh, portends as we go forward in terms of not just diseases and disorders. 40% of our injured soldiers coming home from the battlefield have traumatic, or what we call TBI, traumatic brain injuries, uh, post-traumatic stress. Uh, those of us who are fans of uh, the American style of football know about the uh, problems with concussions that are affecting our players. There are issues that we need to understand better. And the work that we are doing, uh, both at home, where I launched the neuroscience initiative in my own country in 2011, I put into the appropriations bill, or our budget bill, a requirement that all of our federal agencies had to come together and to collaborate. They had to literally play well together, the NIH and the National Science Foundation and the Food and Drug Administration and on and on and on, uh, the Department of Defense. And, and they had to decide what were the 
non-incremental, disruptive breakthroughs that were in front of us in this area that we could invest in as a country. And they've done remarkable work. I was, uh, when the President walked into the East Room in the White House, and there was uh, 500 of the nation's neuroscientists and university leaders and the President and myself, and he, for the first time as the President of our country, said that brain research was going to be a superior among equals. And this was the first thing that was decided by the working group that we were going to map the human brain. Now, the EU has also taken a decision to do a computational modeling to map the brain. And there are some differences, but we can work together, and we need to work together in order to make the progress that we want to make. And I want to make a few points about what's in front of us. Because whether it's epilepsy or uh, Alzheimer's uh, or the challenges related to ALS, and you're going to hear some exciting news about that tomorrow uh, from uh, Dr. Philip Lowe, one of your, they, they, in fact, the closing uh, speaker at this conference. And uh, I'm not going to steal his thunder, but we flew over together, and you got a real treat uh, when you hear from him. But there's so much in this that we can do uh, and make improvements around. So in this, in the machine brain interface, there's work to be done and uh, at a small little university in my hometown, the University of Pennsylvania, doing some exciting work around uh, this area. And there are universities here in Israel and, and in, the, in the European Union that are doing work so that we can make better devices. But it is not just the device world. If we want to think about the futures of neural tech, the algorithms are going to be important. They're going to be just on the software side, uh, opportunities uh, to make these devices uh, customized even more to the circumstances. So when you see someone, I was watching this uh, through a set of screens uh, at uh, University of Penn Lab last week where you see someone who's facing a epilepsy seizure and you see the beginnings of the seizure and what is really going on in that part of the brain and how it can be calmed through a technique that they have now patented uh, with a private sector company. So there's so much for us to do in this area. And in the imaging space, uh, my friend uh, Greg Sorsen, who leads uh, Siemens, they, the work they've done in terms of the imaging techniques and improvements to help us better understand in real time what is going on in the midst of brain operations and in the challenges that people face. So there's, there's a lot to be done on the machine brain interface side, but there's also in therapeutics. Uh, and a friend of mine who grew up in uh, Philadelphia, uh, who's now the CEO of Merck, uh, Ken Frazier, is doing some exciting work on this, on the therapeutic side, but on the, that we can see where there are uh, crossovers in which there's, there's a intertwined nature between the work of technology and the therapeutic side uh, on, uh, in, in terms of pharmaceutical products that can make a difference for Alzheimer's patients and for others. So there is a great deal of promise in this field. And that promise, as we uh, arrived in Israel on yesterday uh, and the late part of the afternoon, was so obvious and I was so excited to be able to join with you uh, because I sense that what your president has organized, this inaugural conference, that there will, this will grow and grow and grow each and every year, but in between there will be real important progress. In fact, we had a discussion earlier today in which we're going to, um, we're going to host a meeting in Washington, D.C. that I'll have a chance to host in which we're going to take uh, the work of the Israel Brain Technology and the EU and the U.S., the working group that uh, we have formed there, and have a meeting of the minds. And so I think that this meeting of the minds suggests the way forward, which is that it is through collaboration, it is through us working together uh, and taking on the most important area of scientific discovery yet to be uh, focused on, the human brain, and making it our own and 
making real-time progress in this regard. So I would say, in moving to my conclusion, that when we got off the plane, we got in a car, even though we had been on a plane for, uh, I don't know, 11 or 12 hours, uh, and we went directly to Jerusalem, to the holy sites. Uh, and it was uh, fascinating because, you know, I know the president's younger son is uh, his name uh, Nehemiah, but to see the walls, and I reflected on the uh, story of Nehemiah and when he said we can rebuild the walls of Jerusalem uh, if we have a mind to work. But it, was, it wasn't just the statement and its reflection on this moment about having a mind to work, but that he went and gathered people from different families in different uh, backgrounds and have them, had them work together to rebuild. And I think that as we think about the challenges of the mystery of the human mind, that it is, in fact, the notion that if we would gather together people who come at this from their own perspective and their own expertise, and if they come from the state of Israel or from the United States of America or from the European Union or anywhere in this globe, and they can help us work towards this goal, we too can rebuild the wall. And we do indeed, starting now, have a mind to work. Thank you.